morning. Okay, we got a quick video today. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick install, step-by-step uh, -step install of the Appway uh, uh, onboard scale system, uh, Bluetooth scale system. Uh, that's what they look like. Do a little unboxing here. Set over here, because I don't want to show you my rook bench because it's completely covered in tools, but um, this is what comes in the kit the uh, actual sensor itself here as well as a 3 8 adapter 3 8 airline adapter that's what i'm going to have to end up using um, there's the the sensor itself there um, and instructions for the install so um, we're going to get this installed um, you need uh, one sensor for each uh, leveling valve on the truck and, tra and trailer so my trailer has one leveling valve in the back and one leveling valve on the drives um, so what the system does is um, it'll take uh, it'll take those measurements and everything like that. It'll compute your uh, weights and do uh, estimation on the steer axle, and should update to your phone. Um, so I'm going to get this installed today. Um, I did a lot of uh, uh, looking online as far as reviews and everything like that against Appway and uh, some of the competitors, and Appway seemed to have a lot of positives. So. Um, plus is the very reasonably reasonably ugh, reasonably priced um, The sensors are hundred fifty dollars a piece um, and I was able to get like 10% off and because um, they have a lot of specials online and everything and um, I bought the two sensors. Um, I did a lot of research on them The only real uh, complaint they had was the the time it takes to upload to the phone um, but you can do some settings to change that and the other uh, uh, complaint there was was the fact that it would uh, the uh, a lot of people were having trouble with their phones connecting to the the sensor on the trailer um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of the advice that Appway had and I'm gonna run a line from uh, the back leveling valve all the way up to the front of the trailer I'm gonna mount my uh, sensor up at the front of the trailer so it's close to the phone so let's get the truck in the shop here and we'll get going on this okay so in reading the directions um they say that uh you have to install the app first and then you install the sensors later it says uh bold underline here before starting this section for the app the, for the sensors uh, pro, uh truck and trailer profile must be completed and the sensors paired to the axle groups in the appway app so i'm gonna go ahead and do that try to walk you guys through that so everybody knows what's going on so this should be a pretty good tutorial actually if anybody's putting these things on their trucks I just want to show you guys the quality in the in the video setup that I have here. This is my custom uh, uh, tripod mount I'm going to be using this in this video. Um, some may call this a broomstick, but it's actually a very technical piece of uh, uh, equipment here. So uh, it's going to allow me to place this camera up and uh, hold it above my head while I'm doing all this below you guys. So I spare no expense for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and unbox um, everything. Here's the two systems, another set of instructions. Shouldn't need that, so let's put this down here. And I got our two systems laid out here, so we will unpackage these. On the trailer, I'm going to end up needing this 3 8 to a quarter inch uh, T. On the truck, I'm actually going to just tie into the same pressure line that runs up to the pressure gauge on the dash. So I should be able to use this quarter inch tee, so that should be fine there. Here's the actual uh, sensor itself um, that threads onto here. And yeah, so let's get the other one unbuckled here, or unboxed I mean. 
Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the app itself. I've already downloaded the app, but I have not configured any trucks or trailers. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's gonna be creating a new truck or trailer. Add truck. Okay, the first thing it's gonna ask for is for a picture of the truck. You can do that if you want. Um, I put in uh, the, the truck type, the 2014 KWT 660, license plate number, VIN number. It's gonna ask for truck type, and we're gonna put uh, fifth wheel. Um, steer axle uh, weight limit um, is gonna be 12,000 pounds. Drive axle uh, does not height, or the steer axle does not have a height control valve, so we're gonna leave that. Um, drive axle, it has one height control valve. Weight limit on that axle group is 34,000 pounds. And be done. So now we'll go to add trailer. And we're going to add one. Take a photo of the, I'll, I'll just worry about the photos later here. Um, going to be 1988 Trail Star, 36 foot. I'll add the VIN and the plate later. Has one add group or one axle uh, uh, group and one height control valve. And because this is a tri axle, I'm going to enter the weight as 42,000 pounds. But because the tag axle is not connected to the height control valve, Every time I weigh this, I'm going to have to weigh it when it's sitting on its tandems. Um, and then I'm going to have to put the, air, the, the tag axle down afterwards. So we're just going to set this at 42,000 so it won't let me know that it's overweight or anything like that. And we'll go done. Um, oh, I, gotta, I have to enter license number. So I'll be back when I get done with this. Okay, so I got everything entered. So we'll go to done here. So now we flip the page on the instructions here and we go to pair uh, the app way sensors. My trucks, okay. Select the truck or trailer to edit. We're going to edit it. And we're going to set up sensor. So, because uh, the battery, the batteries were shipped in the sensors, uh, you have to take the batteries out and let them sit for 45. Not drop them, like I just did. This workbench um, it says you have to let them sit for 45 seconds uh, to allow it to shut off, so you can allow it to pair again. And then here's the actually there's the uh, little plastic piece there that would keep the uh, battery from working. So I'll go ahead and put. The battery back in because I shouldn't have to uh, if there's no contact in it shouldn't have to worry about it okay put this off here so we'll go to pair okay I should make sure I got my Bluetooth on first I do And the sensor goes, once the battery is reinserted, it goes into pair mode for two minutes. So you have to do this within two minutes. So, okay. So it's uh, paired. Um, normal uh, uh, refresh rate is 15 seconds on these. And there's were some complaints about people not being able to see the uh, updates quick enough. And because I want to use this in more of a faster rate, I'm going to change it to fast, even though it decreases battery life a little quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in fast mode. Okay, so that uh, that sensor was updated uh, successfully. So, okay, uh, I'm going to put a little T on the back of this. 
which really was really hard because I got a crappy marker. But anyways, I'm going to make that. Well, truck and trailer both start with T. Whatever. We'll get it figured out. So this is going to be the truck side, and this one's going to end up being the trailer side. So we're going to go back, and we're going to go to my trailers. I'm going to go edit this one. We're going to set up sensor and do the same thing with this one. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to move this sensor way out of the way here, just so it doesn't read it. And we'll let this one pair up. Okay, and I'm going to change this one to fast as well even though I know it's going to wear the battery down a little quicker, but that's okay with me. I'd rather, I'd rather have the quick updates and change batteries once in a while than have to wait 15 seconds. If you're, if you're sitting somewhere where you have the time to wait, it's fine, but I'm kind of, I'm going to be hauling gravel and it's going to be a little faster moving. So I want the, okay, this one did not pair. So let's try it again. I'm going to go ahead and listen and I'm going to remove the battery for 45 seconds and then we'll try it again. I'm going to move that other sensor even further away, I think, while we're doing this. So I'm going to let you guys, I'm going to put you on hold for a minute. Okay, it's been about a minute, so I'm going to reinsert the battery again here. Put it back in and let it pair up here real quick. I moved the other sensor to the uh, cab of the truck, which is probably about 50, 60 feet away. So this one should probably sense a little easier than the other one. And it's still reading the other sensor. Hmm. Well, I wonder if we maybe have a bad battery. I'm gonna go grab another battery. Okay, so I ordered a bunch of uh, these batteries off Amazon for car remotes. So we got a brand new battery in there. I know we had it off for at least 45 seconds. Okay. It's possible that this battery maybe lost a little bit of charge on the way and who knows, we'll see what happens. Hopefully I don't have a bad sensor here. Oh, there we go. We got it, so battery was bad. So, okay, so refresh rate's fast. And good to go. It's kind of a bummer that battery was bad because if you were kind of out in the field and putting these on, you'd be kind of stuck until you get another battery, so. Okay, so I'm probably going to leave some of these, a couple packages of these in the trucks because I have these set on a faster refresh rate. So um, I might need to change batteries at some point. I'm also going to try to keep these somewhat accessible so I can get at them and change the batteries if I need it. So, Okay, so we're done. So now I just go, need to go and install the, uh, the, uh, uh, the actual sensors on the truck and trailer and then I'm going to run to a buddy's uh, yard and we're going to load up the truck or we're going to weigh the truck and then we're going to load it and weigh it again and get them all calibrated. So because this trailer is a frameless, um, I can't just run the airline down the frame of the trailer. I actually have to run it. I could run it up the frame of the trailer, but there's really nothing to attach it to to the actual tub of the trailer here. So what I have to do is I have to run it with all the other lines and then hook it to the draw bar here and uh, run it down the draw bar. So since I have an electrical line running all the way down the draw bar, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the uh, uh, line back from the uh, uh, suspension side. And I'm just gonna tie it to that electrical line and run it up there. And then we will run it up to the uh, fifth wheel plate here. 
and I will attach it to the fifth wheel plate. I'll drill a hole right here and we'll put the sensor in right there. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, tightened up the valve on there. That valve's just a simple Schrader valve, normal like tire Schrader valve. Um, uh, and then the plastic sensor is what uh, screws onto that. So I will tighten that up on there, make sure it seals nice and snug, but not, not too bad. And the reason I'm mounting this sensor up here, normally you, you could mount this back on the axles and I'd probably be okay mounting it back on the axles, but uh, I just wanna make sure I have good uh, line of sight reading from between my phone and the and the uh, 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 sensor there. So that's why I'm mounting it as close to the cab as possible. So um, you could just mount that right in line back at the trailer and probably work, but I just wanna make sure that, I don't, I don't wanna redouble my efforts and end up um, doing, you know, putting it back there and it doesn't work and I gotta move it back up. So I'm just gonna do it right right away and just do it right the first time. So I'm gonna run some uh, uh, line from uh, the, put the T in back by the uh, leveling valve and then I'm gonna run some line back up and zip tie it up and get it all secure and, and get it plumbed in. Okay, this whole process is actually super simple and it's easy to install or you really need very few tools. The only real tool you need is something to cut this airline if you really wanted to put this thing in. Um, so I'm here under the trailer. Here's my leveling valve. Um, one line comes into supply. I don't remember if it's this one or this one, but one cut line comes in to supply the valve and the other line goes out. Um, and on this trailer, it goes out to a suspension dump valve and then it comes back and then it tees in right there. I don't know if I'm pointing at it right and where you guys can see it, but where that T is there, that's where it tees into the uh, airbags back here because I had to change the airbags around because this used to be a six airbag system, now it's just four. Um, so um, I'm actually gonna tee it in on that same line there going to the two airbags. Um, so I will find where this line comes back, it actually comes back from the uh, dump valve uh, back here. So I'm gonna actually tee it in somewhere here just because it's way easier to get at here. Then I'll run the line back and run it down. I'll run it over onto this side here and run it right down that, uh, that side of the trailer up the uh, drawbar and into the sensor. First thing I'm gonna do, I didn't think about it, uh, but I'm gonna dump the suspension um, that way there's no air on it, and that way I'm not uh, getting a whole bunch of air blown around when I cut this little line. So I'll go ahead and dump this first, and then we'll go from there. So this is the line I need right here. I'm going to go ahead. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Can you see? Okay. So this is the line I need right here, so I'm going to cut it right between the bulkhead here and this uh, uh, clamp here. And all I gotta do is, they're push connectors, so I hope you guys can see. All you gotta do is push the push connector in the line there, and then I will feed my airline back here. Uh, I might as well feed it from the front because I don't want to pull everything through the bulkheads heads here, but I'll get that done and bring you back. Okay, I got the uh, airline plumbed through the front bulkheads. So now it's just going to be connecting here. There, connected. And I'll probably put a little strap in here to hold it, but honestly, it's pretty, it's not gonna go anywhere there. I might just strap it to that one. I don't know, we'll see what we do, but trailer connection's all done back here on the suspension. So I just gotta run that line up to the front sensor and then uh, the trailer should be done. So now it's just taking this airline here, uh, running along with these airlines and just tie it to this electrical line. I'll just run it along here, run it down the draw beam here and up to the sensor up there. So I'll get to that and you guys can watch me move real, real fast. Of course, I had to pick the sloppiest day of the year. To do this, 
Okay, the only thing you got to remember on like a frameless like this, on um, that's why this beam is here. It's actually locking the fifth wheel level. Um, so on a frameless end dump, it actually pivots on this fifth wheel plate. So this fifth wheel plate pivots up and down on the trailer. So you got to account for that when you're putting wiring in here like this. You have to account for the stretch that it's going to have back and forth. So I have to run just a little extra line here. Let me run one more zip ties. And here's my other little tip. There's no such thing as too many zip ties. Plug this into the back. Okay, and now one more zip tie. And the trailer is done. Okay, now I'm gonna set up the sensor for the uh, uh, tractor itself. Um, so if you look at this, the airbag here, there's a T that comes out of here and there's lines that comes back up. I'm assuming that line is the line that goes back up to the gauge in the cab. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that sensor right here, that way, right here, over here, somewhere. That way I can zip tie it and it's up and out of the way and uh, it's accessible to change the battery on pretty easily. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is identify it here, which is this one right here. So I'm gonna just clip this zip tie real quick. Get it out of the way. Come on now. There we go. Okay, pull this out. I'm gonna clean it. I should dump the, actually I'm gonna go dump the air quick. Snip it, put the sensor in, in line here. Kind of wants to lay back here a little better. And zip tie it back together. Got my sensor for the truck here. Screw it on. Tight. Let my trail on my zip tie because I hate it when people don't do that. And that sensor's done. Probably could have done that a little prettier, set it somewhere, maybe run it through one of these holes in the in the uh, uh, frame, something like that, or put it on the outside of the frame. But it's fine right here. It'll be nice and protected. It'll get road grime anywhere, but it'll be protected here. Rocks and stuff won't hit it. So both my sensors are in. They're roughly the same distance uh, uh, to the cab from each other. So if I can read one, I can read the other. My phone was picking up the sensor that was in the cab of the truck from about 50 feet away. So I'm not too worried about these sensors picking up on the phone. So the truck is done, the trailer's done. Obviously you saw how I probably put this, installed this system in here in a, probably about a minute. Um, in all reality, I could have done that to the trailer as well. Um, I mean, they install so fast. The only reason I took me a little bit longer was because I wanted to run that line up so make sure I had good connection and everything like that. But other than that, I mean, this stuff's installed so quickly. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run to my buddy's shop and we're gonna calibrate the air system, so. Okay, so Luke and I are here uh, at the construction uh, yard here. Um, we got our, I got my empty weights here. Um, so I'm gonna enter these empty weights into the, into the system here. So I'll try to get the uh, camera mounted here somewhere where you can see that. And we'll kind of go from there. Okay, so we're gonna go through the calibration here. Um, I, bear with me while I read the instructions and do this. So we're gonna calibrate the tractor first. So our steer axle, we're gonna throw in at, we're gonna edit the steer axle and we're gonna put that in at 10,920. And our drive axle drive axle we are going to set at 13240 okay and then the trailer axle group we will set, oops, we're going to set at 9,080 pounds. Done. So we're 
thinking, we're thinking. Okay, so now we're gonna go through and we're gonna load the uh, trailer up with some gravel or some millings here and we're going to uh, going to get our loaded weight. Okay, so I got my measurements. I uh, loaded. Uh, I loaded out. Right now, I'm I'm grossing out at 83.140. So um, let's calibrate the full load. Okay, so my steer axle is sitting at um, 11,100. Check. My drive axle is sitting at. Oops. Oops. 34,280. 34,280. And my. Oh, there we go. And my trailer axle is sitting at 37,760. Check. Done. So right now I'm grossing out at uh, 83,140, which is what exactly what I weighed, and um, my cargo weight right now is about 50,000 pounds. And obviously this is updating up and down while we sit here. I got me and Luke moving around in the in the cab and everything, so that's probably changing some stuff. So we're all calibrated. We're ready to go. So very easy system to use. I'm very very uh, impressed with it. So. So now the only thing left is to go ahead and dump the load that we got uh, loaded up in there. So me and Luke are going to go do that. We're going to clean it up for these guys and we're going to get out of these guys' hair. We're going to see how that liner works and see how this stuff slides out. So that's it. We got the uh, Appway system installed. I think hopefully I did a good job if anybody wants to use it as a tutorial. If not, uh, well, at least you got to see it in action. Um, it's very easy to install, very, uh, really good. I've heard a ton of good comments about the uh, customer service and everything like that. So I think it's a really good system. So uh, I think Luke and I are gonna go grab a treat at the state gas station and head home. So uh, Luke's got something to say. Um, if you like this video, Always remember to tap subscribe. If you like our video, tap the thumbs up button. And if you don't like it, just tap the thumbs down button. And um, leave us some comments below. And and we also visited Elsie. Yeah, Elsie was in the shop, wasn't she? So, can you say God bless? God bless. See you guys. Bye.